Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the second half of Saginaw Valley versus Michigan State University. Saginaw Valley currently leading 2-0. This is Jazzy Josh Framer filling in for Ben Subcheck and Alex Heichelbeck, who have stepped out for a well-deserved lunch. We appreciate you all tuning in. Updates from the other games. It looks like a very hard-fought point happening right now between Towson and JMU, which you can see through the curtain there. JMU currently up 2-0. Looks like it is about, looks like maybe I want to say 17 minutes left in that game. And on the far court, it looks like Grand Valley is up 3-0 on UWP. So we are back underway here. Not sure what the disagreement is about here. WKU captain Nick Johnson and head referee Felix Peroni trying to sort out whatever confusion is happening right now. Want to let everyone know we also have a live stream happening from the CMU UK game right now. The second half of that game just started. CMU up 4 nothing in that game. You can get the link for that on the NCDA Facebook page. Well, whatever dispute it was, looks like the teams have sorted it out. I'm guessing it has something to do with the number of balls each team has off the rush. Spencer, I'm not sure on someone getting carded. I was checking out the uh, Central Michigan UK stream. So we'll have Alex and Ben answer that question whenever they get back up here. All right, thanks for clarifying that, clarifying that, Spencer. Figured it was something to do with uh, ball control off the opening rush. Michigan State captain 
Colin O'Brien really fired up on the sidelines right now. Nick Johnson having to tell him, please return to your bench. Not sure what he was so upset about, but Colin visibly upset. Catch there by number 16, Wilshire of Michigan State. Brings back in 96 of Michigan State. shot there takes out number 68 of Sag Valley number 27 Zajac saying give me a ball after that kill he is fired up right now Catch by number 80 and Cam Massimino for Michigan State eliminated. Great catch there by number 57, Caldwell of Michigan State. Brings back in the captain, Colin O'Brien. Attempted catch there by number three of Michigan State. Results in his elimination. Two nifty blocks in a row there. Number 57, Caldwell, goes down there on an attempted catch for Michigan State. And that's a big swing there. Captain, Fi I'm sorry, former captain, head referee Felix Peroni calling a shot clock violation on Saginaw Valley. 
a great opportunity. Saginaw down to what looks like eight players left. So Michigan State now have a great opportunity. Looks like one elimination now. So Saginaw Valley down to uh, seven players. And number 18 for Saginaw Valley there, taken down on a shot at the attempted block. Victim on the shoulder, so number 11 for Saginaw Valley eliminated. This ball's over has really created a huge advantage for Michigan State that the Spartans have capitalized on. Questionable call there on 37, and referee Felix Peroni did call him out on the shot to the foot. Three Saginaw Valley State players left in now. I'm sorry, four players left in for Saginaw Valley State. Catch there by Max Seiler, brings back in 55 for Saginaw Valley. Five Cardinals now, still on the 10 second shot clock. Things getting a little mouthy right now. I'm getting the impression these are two teams that may not care for each other very much. Thank you, Spencer. That's kind of what I thought on the animosity between these two teams. On the court, as you said, on the court. Very clutch catch there by number 20. Takes the Cardinals down to three players left. The eliminated player for Saginaw Valley. Having some words, I think, for... Well, boys. Oh, my goodness, that was a delicious Zaxby's lunch. People at home probably don't realize is the commentators get less of a break than the darn players. No, no, no rest for the wicked, I'm afraid. So what's so sad about this right now is this Elite Eight has been very lackluster. I was really hoping for some much uh, more uh, competitive games from everybody. I'm seeing that um, JMU, yeah, but they have how many minutes left? Four, oh, is it 13? Wow, okay. So, all right, all right, this is, uh, this is good. So uh, JMU just went up, or is about to go up three points to nothing. Uh, Grand Valley's up four nothing over UWP. Um, CMU is now up 5-0 against the uh, University of Kentucky Wildcats, which I'm a little bit of a fan of, and by that I mean them losing. No offense if there's any Kentucky fans watching. I'm, I graduated from Louisville. It's not fair. 
But anyway, um, there are two players left for Saginaw Valley right now who are just trying to survive. The longer they keep this point going, the more likely it is for them to win. So no matter what, they're going to keep throwing at the feet of the Michigan State players. And so, you know, you notice that they're, gonna all, they're all going to back up because they have to keep throwing. Oh! So we got one last player on Saginaw Valley. You can't really see him. He's moving out in the middle, but... He's got one ball, and he's just going. He's going to always have two balls in his hand because he can throw one, block another. Hiding yeah, he's hiding. There it is. Point. Point taken. We have what appears to be 12 minutes and 41 seconds left on this game. We will be right back for the fourth point. <laughs> 